Hello. How are you? Good. Um, I'm going to talk about language. Uh, I'm going to focus on words. And uh, we use language to express ourselves. Of course, we use more than just our words. But I'm going to focus on words because the language we use helps us to express our thoughts. We can use language to compose our thoughts, to change our thoughts, to recompose our thoughts. It's a means of our understanding our world and interacting with our world. I'm going to talk about three aspects of language. Missing slide, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to talk about three aspects of language. But one thing we need to understand is how, when we're, how much we're using language in our world. We use it when we're interacting socially. We use it in email, in blogs, in Twitters. In the modern world, we use the written word more often than ever. So I'm going to talk about three aspects of, our, of language, of the language that we use. I'm going to start with the multidimensionality of language. So I think you all know that we have words. Sometimes the best words. Sometimes not so great words. And we have sentences. And you may have been required to do this back in school. Anybody do this before? Decompose a sentence? And you might know that a sentence has noun phrases, verb phrases. It, has, it might have prepositions. For example, in this example, the bear and the trout and the trouts. Where? In the river. In, in the, oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> that ruined that. <laughs> OK, so, but you know that things that sentences are used to convey where things are, what an actor is, and what, what action that they're conveying. And you know that language has meaning. It has semantics. And that those semantics have relationships. But so we have words, sentences, and semantics. But I'm talking about something beyond that. Language is multidimensional. It's more than the words, the sentence, and the semantics. So let's start, let's think about words. Words have features. So for example, we already talked about a word is a type of a word. But the word, the type of the word, its nounness has importance for our understanding. It's conveying of an action has importance for our understanding of language. There are other features, imageability. So the bear and the woods, the bear, you could probably imagine. But love in the air is a little bit different. It's harder to imagine. Or the comfort of the chair or the lack thereof that you're sitting in, that you can imagine. So, we also have associations. So if I say doctor, you say? Most people say nurse. <laughs> <laughs> and if I say good, you say? Bad. Everyone played along right that time. <laughs> and we have emotions that are attached to words. And so if I talk about Fear and politics, that has different emotions than if I talk about kittens <laughs> and hope. So these are just a few of the features that we use when we're talking about language or when we're thinking about language. These are the only the few of the features about words. We have all of our experiences. All of your experiences are packed into those words that you're using. And you use all of those experiences when you're understanding language. I'm going to make one brief example, and that is a cat. So if you have a cat, it's a noun. It's familiar. 
You learned the word cat when you were a wee babe. And it, you have images. So for example, I could bring up cat images all day long, and you would not get bored. <laughs> and um, it also brings up emotions and actions. So cats do things. Sentences have features too. So we already talked about syntax. Syntax, it's some, the syntax of a sentence is it one of its features. But there's more to that. Syntax, or I'm sorry, sentences are there for a reason. They're objectives, roles. They have uh, they uh, associations between the sentences. The association between what I said before and what I'm saying now. So multidimensionality. We can all think on the two-dimensional plane. And we can, most of us can think in the three-dimensional world. But I'm talking about something well beyond that. I'm talking about a multidimensionality of language where we're talking about hundreds of features. That when you're talking, those features are all involved in what you're saying. You're using all of those features when you're communicating. So how do we capture the multidimensionality of language? I'm not going to talk about how we capture it in the brain. I'm going to talk about how we capture it automatically using automated tools called natural language processing. So natural language processing is our automated tools, automated methods, algorithms that we use to process natural language, meaning language generated by humans instead of by computers. So what this means is we can take these multiple dimensions of language and capture them automatically via automated tools. So language is multidimensional, and we can capture that. And when we capture that multidimensionality, it is revealing. So, I think you've all experienced doing email and the ad popping up next to where you're typing. Now, you might be talking about alcohol and a bottle of tequila pops up. How did they know? Or you might be talking about something more refined and an ad for ballet pops up. So, you've all heard. That's just for commercial purposes, right? And you probably know that the eye is watching you. So I want to take you back just a few years to a familiar face, Edward Snowden. How many people recognize that face? So he was a CIA, agent, CIA Defense Intelligence Agency employee and an NSA contractor, who in 2013 released an unknown number of documents to reporters. And let's, and what he revealed to the public was that the government was, it has, had been gathering information about the public through tools like Echelon, Prism, and Dishfire. And one of the things he said was that The U.S. was gathering more tool, more information about people automatically online than they w were through interviews. So let me take you back to one interview by Brian Williams in 2014. When I think about an instance that, that really just struck me as, oh my God, we can do this, and that we can do it to anyone was that people at NSA, analysts, can actually watch people's internet communications, watch them draft correspondence, and actually watch their thoughts form as they type. As you write a message, you know, an analyst at the NSA or any other service out there that's using this kind of attack against people can actually see you write sentences in the backspace over your mistakes and then change the words and then kind of pause and, and, and think about what you wanted to say and then change it. And it's this extraordinary intrusion, 
not just into your communications, your finished messages, but your actual drafting process, into the way you think. Into the way you think. So, what information is in your words? Well, our strong stance is that words serve as proxies to actions, skills, interactions, emotions, and your thoughts. We can assess using NLP emotions. This is an easy one. We can assess confusion, boredom, engagement. We can assess whether or not you are lying. We can also assess individual differences. So we can assess your reading ability, your writing ability, how much you know about a topic, how much you know about the world. We can even assess your ability to process information, your working memory capacity. We can take words that you produce, potentially verbally in a discussion, but online, in an essay, in a blog, in an email, in a tweet. We can take those and we can assess an abundance of information about the individual. How do we do it? Well, we take all those features. We take the multi-dimensionality of language. We take that, we use machine learning algorithms. We use machine learning and we pr create algorithms. And those algorithms predict what people are doing, what people are thinking, and what their abilities are. So language is revealing, but language is also powerful. Now, there are entities that are doing this for malicious purposes, but we are scientists, we are educators. So how do we use that? One of the ways we use this in my laboratory is by creating intelligent tutoring systems that provide, that assess various aspects of re related to education, like text difficulty, essay quality, grammar, mechanics, that's an easy one, self-explanation quality. So if you're explaining something, how well are you explaining it? We can assess various things, and we've used this to, we've used this ability to understand language and our knowledge of how language improves learning, that words are tools. We need to understand that also, in addition, putting your words out there externalizing your words, externalizing your language, using your language, engaging, explaining text, explaining your thoughts, engaging in discussions with, with others. All of these things, all of these are things that improve your learning, improve students' learning. So we combine those things in automated tutoring systems. We combine our ability to automatically assess language with this power of language, the power of language to improve learning. We've done so in two technologies that we've created so far. One is WritingPal and one is iStart. So iStart is an interactive strategy tutoring system for active reading and thinking. And the Writing Pal is a tutoring system that provides students with tutoring on how to better write. Both of these systems use AI, and both of the, these use systems use NLP, and both of them are all of them, both of them are game-based. So they engage the student while the student is learning. So going back to Snowden, he said, we can do this. People at NASA, NSA, analysts, actually watch into the way you think. So they do. Language is powerful, though. And you need to use it. 
Thank you.